So hi, Kelsey, how are you doing? I'm good, Sarah, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Saratech? Yeah, sure. So I've been a mechanical engineer with Saratech for about three years now. I've helped some of you with your support cases and I mainly work under the services organization and the design team and I help uh, customers and companies with their engineering consulting needs. Nice. Well, we're excited to hear what you have to share with us today. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about your agenda for the day? Sure. So the biggest thing that I want to take away uh, for today's CS session is that I want to review design for manufacturability. So the assembly that I'm going to be reviewing with you guys today is in the life cycle process, it's almost ready for manufacturability. We just want to make sure that we can push it and ensure that it is ready for the manufacturing floor. And the way that we're going to do that is with visual, visual reporting systems of the 3D products information and weight data. We're also going to perform critical design checks while also running a clearance analysis. So let's and hop into the 3D space. In here, I'm running NX 1899, and we have a reciprocating saw. And before we go into the HD3D tools, let's go ahead and look at what's actually inside our assembly and get to know it. So on the outside of the plastic covering, we have a motor and we have the electrical components. And we're going to see how that is going to be viewed within the visual reporting tools. So now that we know that it's there, Let's go ahead and find where the visual reporting tools are located within an, within NX. Now, some of you guys might not have it already um, out of the box, and I'll show you how to implement that. So on the top ribbon, just go ahead and right click around that uh, gray area and underneath the application, you're going to have visual reporting. And so once you have that uh, visual reporting checked, then you can go ahead and review those options. And the other option for visual reporting that I like to have both open is the visual reporting on the left hand side of the toolbar. It's going to be under the assembly navigator, part navigator, constraint navigator, and the reuse library, which you have probably already are accustomed to. But if you select this icon here, you'll see all the options here for you. Now, there's a few HD3D tools, but today we're just going to go over to visual reporting and checkmate. And if you have ever had issues with trying to find either checkmate or visual reporting, it's probably because you don't have an actual part open. So at least for checkmate, in order to actually view that tool, you're gonna have to have a part open. So let's go ahead and hop into the visual reporting and we can simply do that by double clicking. And on the left-hand side, we can see the window and the right-hand side, we can see the legend window. What's nice about an NX and these tools is that they come with a lot of out-of-the-box reports and tests, and you can simply find them by uh, clicking that drop-down and selecting out-of-the-box reports. It's aptly named. And here we can see and run our assembly across a whole multitude of options, and we're going to go through a couple today. So the first thing is we're going to review the assembly by component group. And we can either, either activate the report here or activate, activate the report um, at the top. So by activating the report, we can quickly see that uh, the assembly has been broken down to in its specific components of uh, where the user has implemented them. And you can also either show in the legend window all of it, or you can break it down towards electrical components, the faster components, and the motor components. And you can also review these segments within the assembly navigator too. Now this allows for the user and for checkers to easily manipulate the assembly rather than playing around with layer configurations, arrangements. This is a much easier way to quickly review the assembly in its certain components, especially if you have a large assembly like a multi-stage rocket, you can see each stage if you've uh, coordinated the components correctly. And so that's one option for that. 
we can also check the position status. So say, for example, if you have a modeling standard or assembly standards for your company that you need to have every product to be fully constrained, this is a great tool to do that. Instead of having to worry about going into the constraint navigator, trying to select the icons and figuring out which part has is actually constrained and which one is partially constrained, visual reporting is a much easier way to do this. And that way it allows for the checkers to um, be able to check a full top level assembly and even um, directly find out which things are unconstrained. So here we can see that a lot of components are, and you can even show the count. So there's 23 uh, parts that are, well, there's 22 different parts um, with a total of 23 uh, count. So you can also check the weight as well. So by selecting activate report, um, this is a report that came completely out of the box. I didn't change any of the uh, report settings and NX automatically categorized these components within um, an, a range of components that made it simple. Instead of having, let's say like 10 different ranges, it just made five. So here we can even edit the report to change the this is the range. And what's nice is that once you edit the report, you can also save it. So we can go ahead and open a report that was pre-created. And if we select all, we can see that we can change the range by going back to edit report. And then by scrolling all the way down, you can go to the advanced settings and you can change the scale. So from if the value of the weight is from zero to 0 0.5, you can even change the color. Um, to whatever you best see fit for your company. So this is a great tool to easily uh, manipulate the assembly to understand the weight constraints. So say, for example, if this is a great tool to notice if you know something is a little bit off, if something has the wrong material, this is a, a good tool to review it. And you can also see the tag items as well. So if you want to look from one kilogram to 2.5 kilograms, you can easily view that and select the tags. And on the left-hand side, you can see that the part is specifically shown in the small window. And you can either show info, info tag here to see um, just more information on the property name, the property type. And um, that's just a way to enhance the customizable reports for your company. So that's visual reporting. Now we're going to go into our second option, which is Checkmate. And I really, really enjoy using Checkmate to ensure that I know the integrity of my parts and my drawings. So this allows you to validate your product information, exactly how it states. So we're going to go ahead and double click. And let's see. So we're going to review so the window. And on the left, we can see the results. And uh, at the bottom, you can even have the settings of what type of results you want to show. If you want to show all of them, that's fine. If you want to show things that have failed, things that have passed, stuff that has information, things that have passed with a warning, you can go ahead and do so. And you can also set up the test as well, similar to how the visual reporting is. So you can either run a set of tests against one current part, um, or an, a whole multitude of options in a directory or multitude of parts in a directory. Next, we can set up the different types of tests. So NX comes with over a hundred different checkmate tests and you can easily utilize them with this tool. So let's say that we want to check four things. We want to make sure that a clearance analysis has been run to make sure that there's no parts interfering with each other. Or and if, they're, if they are interfering, it has to be within a certain tolerance. And let's say we want to make sure that the drafting is completely up to date because if our drawing is going to be close to manufacturing, um, towards a manufacturing lifecycle stage, we want to make sure that the drawing is completely up to date and is representative of the model. Next, we want to get, let's say we want to get information on the wavelength status and we want to make sure that, you know, there's no unused expressions and that it's all clean within the 3D model. We can do that. And there's also run options. So you can either stop off of an error. You can stop the run if there's a warning. You can even save the part after checking if 
if you would like. And you can also save this these results into a specific log file into a directory on your computer. So it's nice if you are running a large uh, database of parts and you want to make sure that you have that recorded. So by selecting Execute Checkmate Test in a matter of seconds, we're able to quickly see that there are some results that have come up um, just on the top level assembly. So from starting from the bottom up, let's go ahead and review them. And we can simply do that by saying Show Info View. And if you're ever confused about what the test is doing or what we call the checker report is doing, you can go ahead and select more detail to understand more. So this states, this checker reports account of possible uh, possibility unused expressions. And we can see that there is zero, which is good. And then next is blank link statuses. So if you're utilizing NX with assemblies, you're most likely utilizing wavelengths. And sometimes you wanna make sure that before they get to the manufacturing step, you want to make sure that um, the wavelengths are broken. And this is a great tool to do that right? without having to dive deep into the assembly. This is a great and uh, fast tool for checkers. Next, we can see that the drawing is up to date with the green check mark. You'll see that it shows that it is passed. But we have seen that there is a clearance analysis that hasn't been run. So let's go ahead and see um, what if there are any issues with that. So we'll go ahead and go to the assemblies tab and if you've never run a clearance analysis, it's very simple. All the way to the right, you'll have clearances analysis. So you'll select set and there's options. So you can either name the clearance name, you can see a clearance between components or just with bodies and you can select an options to analyze. So you can either do all objects, visible objects or selected objects. So visible objects means like if you hid something and you just want to show like the stuff that's in the legend window. For our use case, we're going to do all options and we're going to select OK. So basically the clearance analysis is going through every single part within that assembly and seeing if there's an interference between part A and part B. So it's going to take a little while. Um, and while we're waiting, I just want to uh, share the options with Checkmate. So for example, if you are a if you have a company that has a lot of legacy data or a lot of data that comes in from suppliers and you want to make sure that the parts that and the drawings that you have in your library are up to a certain quality this is checkmate is a great tool to do that because you can test a whole directory of parts against however many tests you would like so out of the 100 tests, you can create a collection of 20 tests and name them under one single name. So that way you can run that single name that holds 20 tests against a whole directory of parts and then save that to a log file. And this allows you to quickly test the integrity of the parts in your library to make sure that they're up to the modeling and drafting standards that your company requires. So that's just an idea that you can utilize with Checkmate and the power that um, it can do within one single run. So going back to the clearance analysis, we can see here um, that there are a, there are 103 interferences found. So it's a good thing that we ran it. So if we scroll down, we can take a look at this uh, trigger and study this interference. So what's nice about the clearance analysis is that since you're only looking at um, two parts that are interfering. By studying the interference, it'll clear out all the other parts, which allows for an ease of visibility. So we know that there is something going on here. So if we calculate the penetration depth, NX easily uh, calculates the depth that they're interfering with each other. And we do see that there is an interference. So it's a great thing that Checkmate caught it and that now we can probably play around with assemblies, play around with the uh, with the width of our model, and that way we caught this error before it went down to the manufacturing uh, phases. So just a really great tool. And if we right click and we restore component visibility, it goes back to um, how we saw it before, including the, the image that was in the middle. So with that, I just wanna review 
um, some notable takeaways. So we learned that sometimes when we feel like our assembly and our model and drawings are ready for manufacturing, it's best to just double check that with the out of the box tools that NX provides, whether that's visual reporting or whether that's Checkmate or both. And this will allow us to greatly reduce our costs by seeing all and correcting these mistakes a lot earlier in the design cycle by validating the products before they even release get released to production because we all know that once it gets down to the manufacturing level fixing those mistakes can be a lot more expensive and with that are there any questions all right thanks so much Kelsey um, it looks like we have one question mm -hmm. the question is how can you run checkmate tests for an entire assembly yeah great question so let me go back to the NX space and we can go back to checkmate and there's an option within Checkmates when you do setup tests is that when you have load components, you have an option to whether you want to just do just this current part, whether you want to do the first level of the assembly, the first two levels, or all the levels. So this is a great way to just kind of dig deeper in the assembly if you want, or if you just want a top level review. So it's a good question. We looks like we have one more question. Um, how are tolerances addressed in interference checks? Interference checks. So let's see. So if right click and create interference geometry. Um, the specific tolerances I I believe aren't uh, implemented unless you've actually put that in with your dimensioning. However, you can understand that there are some tolerance issues if you've already have baked that in within your design previously so it's more of not necessarily there's a specific example of where the tolerances are but if you bake that into your design um, that allows you to easily find if there's an issue great i think that's all the questions we have for today all right, so if you're ready to take it to the next level, Saratech offers much more than just software. We have a wide variety of options for training, services, and 3D printers. So if you have any questions about that, you can feel free to email us at marketing at .com. Um, Thank you so much for attending and have a great day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.